வணக்கம் நமஸ்கார் I'm going to show you one more uh, uh, series of uh, chartered principles. And uh, this time I'm going to change slightly. Uh, if you remember, I had done earlier uh, two videos uh, regarding uh, three bearing method and horizontal 16 angle. This time I'm going to change a little bit. Uh, my main emphasis is on uh, pre-sea boys, particularly uh, DAC first year. And of course, BSC third year also, it will be helpful. So I'm going to go on uh, very basic and fundamentals. I'm going to start with uh, how to proceed plotting a position, or which is commonly called as a fix. I'll be making a series of videos, particularly aimed at uh, BC boys. First year boys, uh, if you all agree with me, uh, they are at a stage where they have not seen practically a lot of uh, things about navigation. They have not uh, gone to a ship. So it is more of a, a classroom uh, uh, But at the same time, okay, you have a paper charts. I'll be uh, using somewhat uh, techniques very similar to what will happen if I come to your class and teach you. Uh, obviously, I'm going to uh, start showing you on the whiteboard initially how to start. And then once uh, we learn something on the whiteboard, then we practically go on to the paper charts. So uh, here also I'll start showing you uh, techniques uh, to plot position on the whiteboard, which is my screen. And later on, I'll be putting in, uh, as usual, a soft copy of uh, charts. So once we have the charts, you will have a better feel or more realistic feel of how you will actually plot the position. So let us uh, start with this videos. I, I will call this video as 3C series one. So I'll be making more of the short videos, mainly aimed at 3C boys. Let us start with the first video today. Simultaneous fix. That is going to be my topic today. This is simultaneous fix. First of all, let us understand what do you mean by a fix? Fix, or you can call it true, or you can call it actual or real position of the vessel. That is what is a fix. So this is the navigation word we use. Okay. Or obtaining a fix. And uh, usually, if you see, uh, we want a fix either on a land or a sea. Obviously, uh, all of you have been using your uh, uh, position fixing methods in your phone, which is your GPS. You are always using it for your journeys on the road, but anyway, it's the same principle. When I'm at sea, I'm looking at only uh, on two dimensions. So that is what uh, I'm looking at. I'm not uh, flying in an aeroplane where I need a third dimension. We are looking only at two dimensions. So whenever two-dimensional position is concerned, I need at least two position fixing tools. We'll look at what are the different tools. So we need at least two. So without two, I cannot do it. Now, majority of the times, whenever you come across the tools, it will be either a position line, which I will be calling as PL. And it might be a position circle, which I will call as PC. So these are uh, abbreviations I will be using. So let us quickly see what is a position line. It is nothing but a line on which a vessel's position can be found out to exist. Just a line. Okay. That is what is called position line. I'll show you how to do it. It is also popularly called as LOP or line of position. Both of them are same. I'll be calling it short form PL. So, an example of PL is something called a bearing of an object. So, whenever you take a bearing of an object, Object could be lighthouse or any uh, land feature, it could be anything. So, bearing of an object, we can draw it. The second type of a tool is a circle or a position circle. All it means is a circle on which your vessel's position can be found to exist. So, that is what is a position circle. An example of a PC is a range of an object. When I say range of an object, let us say 5 miles, 4 miles. 
you can always draw a cohesion circle that will be easy. Okay, these are the two commonly uh, used cohesion fixing tools. They can be obtained in different forms, different methods. So let us see what are the different methods or the means you can get a fix using these tools. Let us start with the first one. If someone gives me two cohesion lines, I can say two bearings. And if they are at the same time, yes, I can get a fix. If someone gives me two cohesion circles, PCs or ranges, these two I have considered as terrestrial, which is land based, so I can get a fix. I can have a combination of one PL and a PC, both terrestrial. I can have two celestial PLs also. Celestial means taking some uh, means of getting a PL from your celestial body. Could be sun, moon, star, or anything. Then I can have a combination of either PL or a PC. And at the same time, somebody can give me depth contours or sounding lines. We'll see how to do that also. I can get a fix. I can get two horizontal sextant angles, a set of two horizontal sextant angles. We've already seen uh, earlier in the video how to do HSA method. Your HSA method normally can give a PC or a PL. Now, if I take two sets at the same time, I can get a fix. I can get two vertical sextant angles also. At the same time, I will get a fix. I can use something called leading lights. Leading lights, I'll show you an example. Leading lights, or they are also called as transit bearings. And uh, in US charts, you might uh, come across a sentence called range lights. They are all, all the same, leading lights. I can have two different ranges of a light based on uh, either a geographical range, a nominal range, or a present luminous range. This is a different, completely different topic. I will make a video regarding this later on. So I can get two ranges from these features of a lighthouse also. The same lighthouses, I can use arc of visibility. Please remember arc of visibility, when I talk about it, it be a color change or it could change from visible to obscure. That means you are seeing and are suddenly at the same time you are not able to see. That could be because of some physical obstruction. That is why it is called obscure. I will uh, show you how to do that uh, method of question principles. And one last one is your simple latitude and longitude. If someone gives you one latitude and longitude, both are considered position lines. And <coughs> I can get a position principle. I have shown you around 10 methods of getting a position fix. You can use various combinations. These are 10 to sorry, 11 uh, methods. So you can use different combination as and when in the question how it comes and what is available. That is how we put a fix. Let us quickly define what is a simultaneous fix. This is the easiest way to define simultaneous fix. When two or more fixing tools are given at the same time, then uh, we call it a simultaneous fix. And that is what we are going to see. So this module or the series one is purely on simultaneous fix. So I will be going on that. Okay. So obviously when I showed you around 11 uh, possible methods in the previous slide, there could be a combination of two PLs, two PCs, PL, PC, or depth control, all those things. I'm not going to enumerate the same thing, it's exactly the same on the previous one. Now, one of the important, most important thing is when you get some readings, you could get readings based on uh, gyro, you could get readings based on uh, compass or magnetic. Please remember, you are supposed to plot only true values of the bearings or the forces on the chart, nothing else. So this is very important for you, for beginners. Easiest example I can start showing you is two bearings or two ranges taken at the same time. So I'm going to start off showing you as, as if I'm uh, showing you on a whiteboard how I would have drawn these things on the whiteboard. That is what I'm going to do. And later on, as I told you, I'll transfer everything on a soft copy of HR, which is uh, more realistic. 
So I'm going to show you that. So let us start with this. Let us say I have two lighthouses. Pure examples, nothing else. Two lighthouses. And somebody has given me two bearings at the same time taken from these two lighthouses. So that is why I call it two PLs, position lines. So we draw first bearing from this lighthouse, then second bearing from this lighthouse. Both of them are at the same time and they intersect at a point and this point is your fix. Okay, this is the easiest one. Let us look at two ranges now. Again, two lighthouses. I call it two position circles also. This is the first position circle or the range from this lighthouse. Please remember a PL or a PC should be marked with an arrow at the end, finishing that. That is a symbol of it. So I'm going to draw the next one also. See, it is intersecting here. So that is a fix now. There's a small catch here whenever I'm encountering a position circle. You will see that I will have an ambiguity. Ambiguity means a position circle will always cut one more position circle or one more position line at two different places. So you need to resolve this ambiguity. So how you do it is very simple. There could be some question, uh, a clue in the question or by common sense, by looking around the chart, you will see that, okay, this cannot be my position. So that logical decision also uh, can be taken out. So let us not go into that. I'll just show you one case of it. So I'm going to show you a very similar example of just what we did in the last slide. I've given you one PC. This is the second PC. You can see it is intersecting here and as well as here. So I have marked the second one as red, considering that by logical decision or by clue in the question, that is not my position. So the only the green one is my position. So this ambiguity is always encountered whenever a position circle is involved in your question. So be cautious about it. Let us look at one latitude and longitude given at the same time. So I can draw a latitude. I can draw a longitude. There are two position lines. And that position is also a fix. I'll show you this on the chart as well in the future slides. Let's go to the uh, next one, which is PL and a PC at the same time. So that means I have a position line from a lighthouse. Please mark with an arrow at the end of the position line and as well as in the end of the position circles. You can see here also ambiguity is there, but I'm not uh, going into the topic. Let us consider that this is my position. So this is my pitch. Let us look at the next case. I'm going to use a depth contour. That means the sounding. So let us see how I use this depth contour. You can see I have a position line given to me at a particular time. At the same time, somebody says that you are crossing a depth contour or a sounding line of, let us say, 50 meters. So if I know this is what is the intersection, this is my fix. I can use this also as position fixing tool. Let us look at the next one, which is called change of color or color sector of a light. And let us say that I'm adding a position circle at the same time. So let me just show you. Uh, this is a fabricated uh, lighthouse, but you will find this kind of lighthouse on the chart also. You can see I have marked two different sectors with a red and green, which actually means that if you are anywhere in this sector, you will see the red color of the lighthouse. And if you are anywhere on this sector, you will see the green color of the lighthouse. There could be white light also, I'll show you later. Let us say this vessel is traveling on this direction. And uh, let us say exactly at uh, 20 hundred hours in the night time. Initially, I was seeing the green light. And when I just crossed this line, the color changed from green to red. So this moment, I can use it as a position line. 
this line where the color is changing, I can call as a position line. At the same time, maybe I can take a range of this light house also. So this is the change of color from green to red. At the same time, somebody gives me a range. I can draw a small PC from the light house, and this gives me a fix. In addition to this, I can go on visible and obscured sectors. I'm just showing you a small island. Let us say there are two lighthouses. Colors doesn't matter, it's just only a different shape. You should agree that if this island has got a mountain in between, obviously this light may not be able to show its uh, character beyond this blue color lines. That means I am limited to visibility only within this sector. It is called visible sector. Beyond this, it is obscured, obscured by physical obstruction, which is your island. Similarly, you can have such problem here also. That means you are not able to see the brown colored white house any more than these two lines of visibility. So now you can see there is obscured sector on both the sides for both the lighthouse and visible sector also. Let us say this vessel is traveling in this direction. Right now I can see the blue color light, but the moment it reaches this line, this spot, you will see the light will get obscured. So now you can see I can use this obscured line as a position line for me at that time. Similarly, let us say my vessel was traveling here. Right now, the brown color light was obscured. I could not see it. But the moment it crossed this line, I could start seeing it. So that is also a position line. So at the same time, if I have one more fixing tool, then I can plot my position at that particular time. So I'm going to use this also as a tool. Now, let me quickly show you uh, how practically in real life you can get a range and pairing. I'm going to use a radar because this is one of the best instruments available to you. I'm going to use and show you how you will get a range and a pair. So this, let me just show you the pictures. Okay, I'm going to use a radar to get a bearing and a range. And then subsequently, I'm going to plot it on a chart. So how I go and plot the chart. Please remember, this is very important. Whenever I say the word bearing, bearings are always measured from your vessel to the object. That is how you measure. So it is always from you to him. Okay. And obviously, only two bearings should be plotted in the chart. I mentioned this earlier also. So once I've got a bearing from the radar, let us say, I go to the chart. But in the chart right now, you will see only the object. The chart is empty and your, your aim is to plot your position. So evidently that chart will be blank and you are supposed to plot your position. So the only object will be there. So I should identify the object correctly and then proceed. If you identify it wrong, obviously your position is wrong and it could be dangerous also. Second one is radar range. When I am standing on my radar, radar is on my vessel. And when I measure a range, the range is also from me to him. The range is not very critical, but this plotting of bearing is slightly tricky. I'm going to show you where people can do mistake. In range, I don't see any possibility of doing mistake as far as you have identified the object correctly. So let us go to the next slide where I'm going to show you how to measure a radar bearing and then later on how to plot it on a chart. So let us say that your vessel is exactly at the center of this screen. This is a screenshot of a radar. Let us say that I want to find the bearing of this tip of the land which is kind of conspicuous for me. I can see it. At the same time, on the chart also, it is very easily visible. So I am going to use this particular spot. You can see I have marked with spot. i just go back. I am looking at the exact spot, the sharp tip. That is what I want to measure. Now, in radar, I have a feature called electronic bearing line, which is called EBL. 
You can see in this radar that evil is shown already with this white dotted line. That EVL is shown with white dotted line. And there is one more feature called variable range marker VRM that is shown with the circle of the dotted. So I'm not going to use it. I'm going to create one more for me for this question. What I'm going to do is I can adjust with a knob the position of this EVL, electronic bearing line. And let us say I'm marking it with this. So I've just intersected with the point. And I'm going to take the reading out of it. You will see that reading is coming approximately 237 degrees true. I'm considering everything true. Two of that is given to you in this radar screen. I'm not going into uh, that part of radar. I'm giving you the answer 237 degrees true. This is the way you find your bearing of that particular object. Bearings are always measured from you to him. You are in the center of the screen. Now let us go for the next one where I'm going to use a radar range. So let me go on radar range where I'll be using the variable range marker. I showed you in the previous slide the dotted circle. I'm going to use it uh, separately on the screen. So let us say I'm again on the center of the screen. I'm interested to check the range of this particular tip of the land. Okay, I'm again showing you with a dot. This is the point I'm interested. So I can control the variable range marker with again a knob and I'll fix it. You can see this yellow color, I exactly intersected with that dot. And let us say this gives me a reading of 4.4 nautical miles. So this is how you take practically a radar bearing and a radar range. In the next slide, I'm going to show you both these features taken at the same time. In this question also, I could have used a bearing. I could have used a bearing. So let me show you one more slide where I'm going to use the radar range and radar bearing at the same time so that I can use a fix. Please look at this screen. Again, I'm at the center. And my aim is this pointy end of the land, which is very easily identifiable at my chart also, on my chart also. This is the tip. The first thing is I'll put my EDL. I got my bearing as 118 degree two. Then I put my VRM. Let us say I got four nautical miles. Now the same reading, I have to go to the chart and plot my position on the chart. The chart will be empty. You don't know where you are on the chart, but you can recognize this piece of the land. So that means I'll be coming reverse. The measurements, what I took, everything was from me to him. Now, in the chart, you can only see him, the object. So how do I come reverse? I'm going to take one simple example. Let me take an example. A place called Bill of Portland. This is uh, on your charts. You can see it is there in your chart 5049. This is your bill of Portland. You can see bill of Portland. I will mark the circle. The tip of the land, there is a lighthouse also. I will use the tip of the land. Let us say on the radar, I could see the tip of the land. I'm going to use it. Mark with an orange color circle, the tip of the land. Let us say on the uh, radar, when I was passing through the Bill of uh, Portland, I found out the bearing of that Bill of Portland as 0 to 0 degrees through. And at the same time, I found out the range of that Bill of Portland from me. It was showing me 5 nautical miles. These are the two readings I got from the radar. Now, I come to the chart. This is the chart. Chart doesn't have anything except Bill of Portland. How do I proceed plotting my position on the chart? Let us take the bearing first. Bearing, this is where a lot of confusion happens. Please remember, when you put your parallel ruler or your set square on the compass rows, first thing is you will be measuring what is 0 to 0. You will be coming to this position of Bill of Portland on the chart. And you will see you can draw a line like this, or you can draw a line like this. The parallel ruler can make you or help you to draw a line in both the directions. But only one direction is correct, the second direction is wrong. So what is the logic behind it? Please remember, 
when i say position line that means my vessel could be anywhere on this line or anywhere on this line. that is what is the meaning of position line but only one of them is right again please go back to the basic definition of bearing i said bearings are always measured from the vessel to the object and do you agree if you know a little bit about compass rows if i stand on the red color vessel the bearing of that object which is below port line is 200 not 020 so that means this is wrong but when you come to this black color line where a green color vessel is there if you stand on the vessel and take a bearing it will match with 020 you can be anywhere on this line all of them give you only one answer called 020 that is why it is called position line so i call this 020 position line and i agree that the black one is correct but a small catch here you should realize even though the bearing is measured from the vessel to the object but we are drawing a small arrow in the opposite direction this is a protocol which is followed in your chart work so please draw a line put a mark here which is in the opposite direction which it tells you that i could be anywhere on this line this three green color vessels anywhere and all of them when you are on those vessels if you measure bill of portland will give you 0 to 0 from any of the three green vessels you will get bill of portland as 0 to 0 so this is how we draw okay it is slightly tricky be careful not always you will get this the wrong line on top of a land which obviously means i am not here but not always you could have a, an island where water is there on both the sides so you have to be careful please remember bearings are always taken from the vessel to the object so when you draw from the object you are drawing in opposite way i could use this saint albans head also for position fixing but right now i am not doing it i'm just showing an example okay let us go to the second part we have already seen how to draw the bearing let us go to the second part which was the range given to me in this particular example five nautical miles so i'm going to take a compass measure five nautical miles you can see there is a grid of latitude scale all measurements of nautical miles are taken from latitude scale i'll measure five nautical miles put my compass on the tip of this bill of portland and draw a circle which is five nautical miles so this is a position circle which means your vessel could be anywhere on this circle anywhere i don't know right now with this only five nautical miles i don't know so this is what is your position circle now both these values of 0 to 0 degree true and five nautical miles if they are taken at the same time i can draw a fix so i am going to combine both of them in a single moment let us see how to do it i'll first please remember the earlier one is 0 to 0 and from 0 to 0 i have drawn the position circle there is only one place they both are intersecting and that is this part this becomes your fix so this is how a fix is obtained and now you can find the latitude longitude of that fix and give it in the answer that is how you finally finish the question now uh, let us say all my whiteboard job is over i am going to go to my real chart to show you how i am going to use this fixing tool the same fixing tools i was using on the whiteboard earlier i am going to show you here on the chart which is giving you a realistic approach so let us say i start with two position lines i am going to choose this lighthouse and this lighthouse both i had taken bearings bearings could be radar bearings it could be visual bearings also this possibility of visual bearings so i am going to draw a position line from the first one i am going to mark a time stamp please remember your vessel is anywhere on this black line and from the black line only you measure the bearing of that vessel so you are drawing it in the opposite direction again here i am going to draw the bearing both of them are 8 o'clock let us say so intersecting at the same time this is a fix 
your vessel is anywhere here, forget the direction or the heading of the vessel that is only depicted. It, it could be going southwesterly, it could be going south also, doesn't matter. I'm just showing you a depiction. Let us look at next one. Somebody has given me a lat long and he has given me values. I need to plot this lat long on the chart. So I will use latitude and longitude grids. You can see a small line which shows 50 degree, 20 minutes north. And this vertical line, which is a Greenwich meridian, which is 0, 0, 0. And this is a fix. So your vessel could be like this. Why I particularly put the vessel in this direction? Because it is passing through a traffic separation scheme. And you can see an established direction of the flow, traffic flow. So it cannot be opposite direction. It has to be this direction. Let us look at the next one. I'm going to give you one position line and one position circle. Let us say from uh, Catherine Point Lighthouse. So this is your position line. At the same time, I got a position circle at 8 o'clock. This becomes your fix. This one could be traveling any direction. That is not hard and fast. Let us see how can draw two position circles. I'm going to choose this Greenwich boy. And I'm going to use this beachy head lighthouse. Let us say this was giving me a range, radar range. At the same time, that lighthouse was giving me one more radar range. You can see two position circles are intersecting at two different points. So this could be my fix. This could also be my fix. But now I'm taking the logical conclusion. Because I'm not supposed to be normally within this traffic separation line, which is the end of the traffic, traffic separation or the small zone. This position looks more logical for me and the vessel could be traveling in this direction. It's again matching with the TSS established direction of flow. Let's look at one more case where I'm giving you a position line from St. Catherine's point. And I'm giving you a spot sounding. Spot sounding is exactly at that point. This was the depth, chartered depth. So I'm going to draw a position line. And let us say at that moment exactly I calculated the chartered depth was 19.2. That means this was my position. Vessel could be traveling in any direction. There's a different issue. Okay, this is a PL plus spot sounding. Let us do PL. With a depth contour. Depth contour means a line joining equal depths. So you can see a depth contour of 30 meters, you can see depth contour of 50 meters, and so on. Okay, I'm going to use depth contour. Let us say this lighthouse had a PL like this, and at the same time, there was depth contour which was calculated as 30 meters. So this is your fix. The soil could be traveling in any direction. One more, let us say I had a PL and a depth contour of 50 meters. So you can see it is here. To show you uh, one more uh, a repeat of a uh, fixing tool where I'm using a position circle and a position line here. You can see the PL plus PC, the vessel could be going in this direction. Let us look at transit bearing. What transit means from the vessel, you are seeing two lighthouses or two objects exactly in the same line. That is what is transit bearing. So I'm going to use transit PL plus one more PL. Let us say I'm choosing this lighthouse and this lighthouse. I was in such a way that I could see from my ship these two lighthouses are the transit bearing of one to eight degrees. Bearings are always measured from the vessel to the object. But when you draw on the chart, you are drawing in the opposite direction. So this is that 1 to 8 bearing of transit. At the same time, I could measure one more bearing from this lighthouse also and it gave me one more PL. So you can see your vessel is somewhere here. So this is a transit bearing. Let's try to use one sector lights, even though there is no sector here. I'm going to choose this wolf rock. I'm going to create one artificial sector. It is not shown. 
You can see this LIDAR is also showing as white and red, W and R, but I'm creating different sectors just for depiction and understanding purpose. In real life also, you will get LIDARs with different sectors. So I'm giving you different sectors of these lights. Let us say this is a red sector, this is the green sector, and this is a white sector. Please remember on a chart, you cannot show white on a white background. That is why this kind of uh, orangish color is used to show white light. This is only used for light houses. Okay, so let us assume that your vessel is crossing this line exactly at 8 o'clock. Although lights can be visible only in nighttime, this is depictive. You can consider this 20 hundred if or 8, 8 p.m. So don't bother too much about this time. Let us say it is crossing this line and exactly the color change from green to white. So that means I have a PM. At the same time, if I have one more PL or one more PC, I can plot a piece. Okay. Let us say after one hour or so, some other vessel is crossing this, this changing from green to red. Please remember, lighthouses and the colors are visible only in the night time. Daytime, you will not be able to clearly see that. It is not possible. Uh, very difficult. So, this time of 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock, please take it as a small mistake. You can consider as night time 8 o'clock and night time 9 o'clock also. So, when you are crossing this from green to red, again, I can use a position line. So this is also a position line. At the same time, I can mark a fix if I have one more two. Okay. So uh, that's it. This was uh, one of the most uh, basic and simple version of the series of videos which I'm going to make for uh, PC boys. I hope it was useful. I'll be coming up uh, soon with a few more videos, particularly being used in. BAC first year and BAC third year. I'll catch you soon when I come with the next video in the series number two. Okay. Namaskar. Namaskar. Monica.